What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be breaking down the Plandemic documentary. I'm sure by now you've seen it all over your news feed, especially your Facebook feed, because just about every conspiratorial person I know is sharing this. And then I've seen more people sharing and more people sharing. I see people not even involved in any kind of political or conspiratorial stuff ever sharing this. So I had to watch it and I figured let's break it down. And I want to go through all the claims that are 100% verifiably false. So we're going to look through all the claims. And then after that, if you still want to believe old Judy, then I guess it's America and you're allowed to do that. Now, I can't really show any of the video because YouTube keeps taking it down. But I want to try and show a few seconds of the intro and talk about the tone they're trying to set. And hopefully YouTube won't take me down. So let's check that out. At the height of her career, Dr. Mikovic published a blockbuster article in the journal Science. The controversial article sent shockwaves through the scientific community as it revealed that the common use of animal and human fetal tissues were unleashing devastating plagues of chronic diseases. You see how they set it up with these dark ominous tones and she did this thing and she did that thing and she's one of the greatest scientists to ever live and the, the globalist leader trying to silence her. The whole two minute intro is basically saying stuff like this. Even though she's written two books, somehow the globalist leader trying to silence her. By the way, we get our first 100% verifiably false claim in the first 45 seconds. Also, I did about 14 hours worth of research for this video and I'm gonna leave links to everything in the description so if you don't believe me go and check it out for yourself the claim made by the filmmaker Mickey Wills who's an actor slash model that this lady Judy Mikowitz published a paper in the journal science saying that the use of human and animal fetal tissue is unleashing a plague of chronic disease is just simply not true now she did publish a paper in the journal science but what it said was that the chronic fatigue syndrome was linked to a mouse retrovirus called XMRV. That's it. Nothing to do with anything else. This is a journal science talking about the study and what it found. Now more on this story in a minute. Now this study ties into the documentary, but before we start breaking everything down, a little background on Judy Mikowitz. She started her career at the National Cancer Institute, the NCI, in 1988 as a lab technician. She obtained a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology from George Washington University in 1991. And in 2009, the paper she wrote was the pinnacle of her career. And she wrote this while working at the Whitmore Peterson Institute in Nevada. So I really want to get into the claims she makes about this study because this is really like the building block they give you to why you should trust this lady. And, and pretty much everything they say about it is 100% false. So I want to give you the exact quotes from the documentary and then we'll go from there. So the interview starts off like this. He says, you made a discovery that was different than the agreed upon narrative and for that they tried to destroy you. She agrees and says yes she was arrested put under a gag order they arrested her with no evidence and she was that they just told her she was a fugitive from justice and they made her go bankrupt with a perfect credit score and the man behind this whole cover-up was no none other than Tony Fauci and the filmmaker says Tony Fauci was involved in a cover-up and she says Tony Fauci directed the cover-up big bold giant claim now for what actually happened Judy's paper was retracted when 10 different groups tried to replicate it and it didn't work and on top of that 13 people that worked with her on the paper came forward and said we used contaminated samples in the testing and real quick on her story about why she went to jail it's very much false she claimed there were no charges she was actually charged with two counts of felony theft for stealing lab equipment and computers and she was fired right before that for not sharing data. Here's an article from 2011 talking about it. Also, she makes this big deal about saying, oh, I was held as a fugitive from justice, which all that is is when they hold you in one state when you're getting prosecuted in another. So in her case, she turned herself in in Nevada and she was getting prosecuted in the California. So while she's in Nevada, she's held as a fugitive from justice. That's just a normal thing. That's not like a big deal like she makes it out to be. It's just everyday stuff. And now this is where Fauci comes in. Is he part of the cover-up? Well, let's check it out. While Fauci wasn't involved in any cover-up, he actually requested that Judy and a guy named Dr. Ian Lipkin try and recreate Judy's research from the paper in the 2009 Science Journal. So not only did Fauci not do anything to cover up her research, he actually gave it another chance by funding it. So you might be saying, well, 
It must have been that study, right? That was the one that Fauci covered up because he was involved in it. Well, actually, no, because it found the exact opposite of what her 2009 paper did. And pretty much without a shadow of a doubt, debunked her previous study. In fact, here's Judy Mikowitz on tape saying as much. Exactly. I mean, we so rigorously excluded our initial findings that, that these agents, MLV, XMRV is in blood and and of course a lot from the lymph system pours into the blood we've looked at the plasma we've looked at the serum by deep sequencing technologies and and our original work cultured it at length it's it's simply not there um, but now is the time to use these valuable materials and and move forward um, and 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 that's what science is all about and, and that's what this opportunity was for the patient population and why I think it was so important that it was supported at the level it was by, by the NIH and, and these investigators. Yeah, if there had not... Now that was a clip from a briefing. The entire video I'll link to in the description. It's about an hour long. That video, she goes over the entire details of why her 2009 study was wrong. And as you can see in that clip, not only does she say her past study was wrong, she thanks Fauci's organization for all their help. So, when was this cover up? Also, the timeline makes absolutely no sense. I really wish I could go step by step with the video, but YouTube keeps taking it down. But, like, they're very vague in the documentary. They just kind of bounce all around. So, just, just do this timeline in your head. So, 2009, she does this paper. 2010, it gets retracted. 2011, she goes to jail and also gets fired. 2012, she works with Fauci again. And one other thing, there was some confusion as to when this cover-up was she was talking about, because like I said in the documentary, they're very vague. But she clarified in an interview about four or five days ago that when she talks about the cover-up in the documentary, she is talking about the 2009 paper. That's what she's talking about, Fauci covered up. Just so we're all clear. So that whole timeline has to make sense but somehow Fauci covered it up. So these next few claims I'm going to go through a little bit quicker. That first one I really wanted to break it down and just show you how absurd her claim is when you really go through it piece by piece. But here's her claim on Ebola. Basically this lady was involved in every large-scale infectious disease the last 40 years. But here's what she says. I was working in Fort Detrick, my job in 1999. And my job was to teach Ebola how to affect human cells. Ebola couldn't affect human cells until we took it into a lab and taught them. So she claims in 1999, basically they made Ebola able to attack human cells. Well, somebody might want to tell that to the 430 people that died in Sudan from Ebola in the 70s. Now this is one that doesn't take a lot of time because it's just easily provable false because it takes one or two Google searches and you can see that Ebola killed people before 99. This is just facts. So here's the claim when it comes to AIDS. Now, like I said, this lady's been involved in every major disease for the past 40 years, apparently. This is what she says. She claims she was part of the team that isolated AIDS in 1984. She says Fauci and Robert Gallo were trying to spin the story in a different way. According to her, Fauci came up and said, we understand you have a paper about to go to press and we want a copy of it. She says there's a paper in press and no, you can't have a copy of it. According to her, he started screaming at her and saying it was she was going to be fired. And then later, when the French doctor whose team she was working on came back, he for some reason gave the paper to Fauci. And then him and Robert Gallo sat on it for several months, killing millions. Now, there's lots of issues with this claim, but I'll start with the easiest one. And that's the fact that according to the AIDS Institute, it was first discovered in 1982. And then it was actually named AIDS in 1983 and of course she's claiming all this happened in 1984. So let's get to the rest of her claims. She claims they had a paper and published ready to go. Fauci storms in, takes it from them, sits on it for several months and then for that reason they kill millions. Now this would be a huge piece of evidence in her favor if she could provide anything to show that this is true. Of course they don't give you anything in the documentary and then in a follow-up interview Four days later, she was asked to provide any evidence. She couldn't give the name of the lab, she couldn't give the name of the paper, and she couldn't give 
the name of the journal that was publishing the paper. So, seems kind of odd. I don't know. Do with that what you will. And just one more thing. This was in 1984, apparently. So, this was seven years before Judy Mikowitz got her PhD. So, one of the heads of the United States governmental research when it comes to AIDS has to go through a lab tech that's at least seven years away from getting her PhD in order to get a copy of this paper. Does that make any sense to anyone? Alright, this next claim is one of the only times I use an actual study to try and prove what they're saying, but they come to the completely wrong conclusion than the study did. She claims a study done by the Department of Defense shows that the flu vaccine increases the odds of getting coronavirus by 36%. This is a study right here, and surprise, surprise, that's not what it says. It actually says that there is little to no difference in the subjects. And what it was testing to see is if people who got the vaccination got sick more often, but not for COVID-19 because it didn't exist for two more years. So that's another claim debunked. And again, like I said, links for everything will be in the description. If you don't believe me, do your own research. I can't even get to everything because there's so much. But I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to give you my favorite. And it's just, I saved the best for last because it's just so funny. It, it's so funny. But, so she claims that the AMA said they were going to take away doctor's licenses if they prescribed hydroxychloroquine. Except that's also not true because the AMA is not a regulatory body. They are a voluntary organization. They couldn't take away a doctor's license if they wanted to. All they actually did was issue precautionary guidelines. Here's the press release right here. Nothing about taking away licenses because they couldn't even if they wanted to. So there's another clearly false claim. So best for last, and this one's a twofer. So about halfway through the documentary, he asked her, I gotta ask, are you anti-vax? And she says, oh no, I'm not anti-vax. Vaccines are immune therapies, just like this, blah, blah, blah. She gives this really long, drawn-out answer. Doesn't really give any specifics, kind of like most anti-vaxxers do. They always say stupid shit like, I'm not anti-vax. I'm anti-hurting children. That's what I am. And like I said, she never really gives a position, but this is what most anti-vaxxers do. They just dance around it. But then I was like, well, this is kind of weird, because I didn't know anything about her until I watched this. So I'm like, what? why would they just bring that up randomly? This documentary about Fauci and cover-ups and her papers and AIDS and Ebola. All of a sudden, we're going anti-vax. And I'm like, hmm, well, that's kind of odd. And then I found out that she is 100% an anti-vaxxer. So after her research was debunked in 2012, she went away for about two years. And when she reappeared, it was in the anti-vax movement. She spoke several times at Autism One, which is the largest anti-vax conference in the country. She made claims there like Zika, Ebola, and West Nile were all produced in a lab. Okay, okay, so that doesn't, that doesn't really prove much. I mean, you know, that's circumstantial evidence. That doesn't mean she's an anti-vaxxer. Um, well, Judy just so happened to recently release a book that just lined up perfectly with the release of this documentary. Crazy how that works, but... It just so happens to be forwarded by the most famous anti-vax man, anti-vaxxer man. It's like the worst superhero name ever. But the fa most famous anti-vaxxer, Robert Kennedy. Now, there's one other person involved in this fiasco, and that's Kent Heckin' Lively. I know, fun name to say. I hope I'm saying it right. He's the co-author. Let's check out what his claim to fame is. All right, let's see what we get. Kent Heckin' Lively. Hmm. World's number one anti-vaxxer. What? No way. That can't be. Judy said she's not anti-vax. Kent Heckin' Lively. Self-proclaimed number one anti-vaxxer in the world. Huh. He gave himself that title. It must be true, I guess. Shit. Can't believe Judy would lie to me like that. So I don't know about you guys, but I think it's pretty hilarious when I'm trying to find out if somebody's anti-vax or not, and I Google their co-author's name, and literally the first thing that pops up is world's number one anti-vaxxer. Like, can you hit the nail any more on the head than that? But yeah, old Ken Heckin' Lively is quite the douche. He was the producer of that documentary, Vaxxed. He also contributes to a website that believes autism is caused by your environment. 
Australia literally did not let him in the country because they think he sucks. But anyway, so it's pretty clear that when the filmmaker brings up being an anti-vaxxer, that he's doing it to give her an out. You know, she can kind of push the narrative in the way she wants because she'd say, oh, I'm not anti-vax. I've just spent the last eight years in the anti-vax movement and wrote two books with the most famous anti-vaxxer and the self-proclaimed number one anti-vaxxer, but I'm not anti-vax at all, you know. But hey, she doesn't need that anti-vax money anymore. That's chump change when she can get that sweet, sweet coronavirus conspiracy cash. And business is booming because that book is number one on Amazon. What do you know about that? So much for being silenced. So I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be, so I'm going to leave links debunking several other things in the description, including these, these, these things right here. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to debunk those down there, so check that out. So just to do a final recap real quick, we have a lady whose biggest claim to fame was debunked several times over. The last time it was debunked was by her. She never works in a lab again. She tours the anti-vax circuit for about eight years. And then all of a sudden, when coronavirus hits, she has all the names, knows where all the bodies are buried, and has all the answers. Just buy my book. Hmm. Now clearly something like this is easy to debunk, but the problem is, is that there is so much wrong with our government that it's easy to find stuff like this and say, yeah, well, that seems plausible because our government sucks. Well, they do suck, but the way we change it is not by sharing these stupid conspiracy videos. It's by actually going out and voting and, like, getting involved and knowing what's going on. Like, the real conspiracy is the fact that the guy who invented insulin gave it away for free, yet now it costs 20 times more here than it does in Canada. Or Mexico. Explain that to me. There's a conspiracy for you. But anyway, that's another video for another day. Oh, and maybe if we stop putting politicians in office that take a bunch of money from Big Pharma like Donald Trump and Joe Biden, maybe, just maybe, we would have a better shot at actually changing things. But that's just my take on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Feel free to check out all the links that'll be in the description if you haven't gotten enough of this stupid thing already. Um, feel free, like I said, do your own research. I'll have plenty of links. There's plenty of other stuff you can look at. Um, but I'm pretty sure at this point you know this one is total BS. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Be sure if you like the content to hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, and definitely hit the like button. I'm a brand new channel, so any likes, shares, subscribes really help me out. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time, guys. Peace.